I recently asked ChatTTP for reasons why Trudeau's Bill C-21 is a very bad idea. The answers it gave back to me were both surprising and quite insightful. So I'd like to share those with you. Chat GTP, please provide 10 reasons why Canadians should be allowed to own and use handguns. 1. The right to self-defense. It can be argued that they have the right to protect themselves and their families from harm. 2. The right to bear arms. It can be argued that that owning a handgun is protected under the right to bear arms, as outlined in the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. 3. Personal responsibility. It can be argued that that handgun owners should be able to take personal responsibility for their actions and the safe use and storage of their firearms. 4. Law-abiding citizens. It can be argued that that the majority of handgun owners in Canada are law-abiding citizens who should not be punished for the actions of a small minority of criminals. 5. Hunting and sport. Handguns can be used for hunting and sport shooting, which can be a lawful and legitimate form of recreation. 6. Collecting. Some people may collect handguns as a hobby, and should be allowed to do so. 7. Personal preference. Some people may prefer handguns over other types of firearms for personal reasons such as weight, size, or ease of use. 8. Deterrent to crime. Allowing the legal possession of handguns could be a deterrent to crime, as criminals may be less likely to target individuals who they know are armed. 9. Training and education. People who own handguns should be required to go through proper training and education to ensure safe handling and use. 10. Other countries. Many other countries, such as the United States, allow citizens to own and use handguns, and Canada should not be an exception. Chat GTP please provide 20 reasons why recently proposed changes to further restrict and prohibit many types of firearms in Canada is a very bad idea and wrong. 1. Infringement on individual rights and freedoms. Proposed changes would infringe on their rights and freedoms, such as the right to bear arms. 2. Disproportionate impact on law-abiding citizens. Proposed changes would disproportionately impact law-abiding citizens who use firearms for lawful purposes such as hunting or sport shooting. 3. Ineffectiveness in combating crime. Proposed changes would not effectively combat crime, as criminals are unlikely to abide by new laws and regulations. 4. Lack of evidence supporting effectiveness. It can be argued that that there is a lack of evidence to support the effectiveness of the proposed changes. 5. Potential for unintended negative consequences. Proposed changes could have unintended negative consequences, such as increasing the black market for firearms. 6. Lack of consultation with affected parties. It can be argued that that there has been a lack of consultation with affected parties, such as firearms owners and industry representatives. 7. Lack of focus on root causes of crime. Proposed changes do not address the root causes of crime, such as poverty, mental illness, and gang activity. 8. Lack of consideration for regional differences. Proposed changes do not take into account regional differences in firearms use and culture. 9. Lack of understanding of firearms. Proposed changes are based on a lack of understanding of firearms and their use. 10. Lack of support from experts. Proposed changes do not have support from experts in the field, such as law enforcement and criminologists. 11. Overly restrictive. Proposed changes are overly restrictive and could limit lawful firearms use and activities. 12. Lack of transparency and public access to information. Proposed changes lack transparency and public access to information regarding the implementation and enforcement. 13. Lack of protection for whistleblowers or those who speak out against the legislation. Proposed changes do not include adequate protections for whistleblowers or those who speak out against the legislation. 14. Lack of flexibility to adapt to changing circumstances. Proposed changes do not have enough flexibility to adapt to changing circumstances or new information. 15. Lack of oversight or accountability measures. Proposed changes lack oversight or accountability measures in place. 16. Lack of focus on criminals and illegal firearms. 
proposed changes focus on legal firearms owners rather than criminals and illegal firearms. 17. Lack of consideration for economic impact. Proposed changes do not take into account the economic impact on the firearms industry and related businesses. 18. Lack of recognition of personal responsibility. Proposed changes do not recognize the personal responsibility of firearms owners for the safe use and storage of their firearms. 19. Lack of consideration for international laws or agreements. Proposed changes do not take into account international laws or agreements. 20. Lack of broad support from the public. Proposed changes do not have broad support from the public. Chat GTP please give reasons for why Canadians should suspect that currently proposed restrictions on firearms will not end with the changes being proposed but, instead, will open the floodgates to more and more restrictions until all gun rights are gone and civil liberties suffer. 1. Precedent of incremental restrictions. It can be argued that previous restrictions on firearms in Canada have been implemented incrementally and that the proposed changes may be the first step in a series of further restrictions. 2. Political pressure to take action. It can be argued that political pressure to take action on firearms may lead to further restrictions in the future, even if the proposed changes do not have the desired effect. 3. Lack of clear definitions or criteria. Proposed changes lack clear definitions or criteria for what constitutes an assault weapon or other prohibited firearms and that this may lead to confusion and arbitrary enforcement in the future. 4. Lack of focus on criminal behavior. Proposed changes do not sufficiently focus on criminal behavior, and that this may lead to further restrictions on law-abiding citizens in the future. 5. Lack of consideration for economic impact. Proposed changes do not take into account the economic impact of further restrictions on the firearms industry and related businesses. 6. Lack of consideration for impact on rural communities. Proposed changes do not take into account the impact on rural communities, where firearms are used for hunting and other lawful purposes. 7. Lack of focus on illegal firearms. Proposed changes do not sufficiently focus on illegal firearms, and that this may lead to further restrictions on legal firearms in the future. 8. Lack of acknowledgement of personal responsibility. Proposed changes do not sufficiently acknowledge the personal responsibility of firearms owners for the safe use and storage of their firearms. 9. Lack of support from experts. Proposed changes do not have support from experts in the field, such as law enforcement and criminologists, and that this may lead to further restrictions in the future. 10. Lack of public support. Proposed changes do not have broad public support, and that this may lead to further restrictions in the future. Chat GTP, what are the possible downsides to red flag laws? Red flag laws, also known as Extreme Risk Protection Order ERPO, laws, allow for the temporary removal of firearms from individuals deemed to be a risk to themselves or others. The downsides to red flag laws that apply to residents of Canada include 1. Due process concerns. It can be argued that red flag laws could be used to remove firearms from individuals without due process, as they allow for firearms to be removed before a hearing or trial. 2. Potential for abuse. It can be argued that red flag laws could be abused by individuals seeking to harm or harass someone else by falsely claiming that they are a danger to themselves or others. 3. Lack of a mental health solution. It can be argued that red flag laws do not address the underlying mental health issues that may lead to a person being deemed a risk to themselves or others, and that they do not provide adequate resources for individuals to receive treatment or support. 4. Limited effectiveness. It can be argued that red flag laws may not be effective in preventing gun violence, as they only address a small subset of individuals who may be at risk of committing an act of gun violence. 5. Lack of notification. It can be argued that red flag laws may not provide enough notice or due process for the individual whose firearms are confiscated. 6. Impact on civil liberties. It can be argued that red flag laws could have a negative impact on civil liberties, as they allow for the government to take away an individual's firearms without a conviction. 
7. Limited capacity for enforcement. It can be argued that red flag laws may be difficult to enforce, as they rely on family members, friends, or law enforcement to bring forward information about an individual. 8. Lack of standardization. It can be argued that red flag laws may lack standardization, as different provinces and municipalities may have different laws and procedures for issuing extreme risk protection orders. 9. Lack of evidence of effectiveness. It can be argued that red flag laws have not been proven to be effective in reducing gun violence, as studies on their effectiveness in Canada are limited. 10. Could be seen as infringement on rights. It can be argued that red flag laws may be seen as an infringement on their rights, and that it's a slippery slope towards further restrictions on gun ownership. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I've got another one for you. This one right over here. Check it out. Remember to click like on this video if you did enjoy it, because that really helps us with the algorithms for YouTube to get more people to see it. Catch you next time.